Okay, so I had an interesting thought. Um, there was a experiment I read about a number of years ago about uh, monkeys and a, a banana on top of a ladder and a blast of cold water. And you might you might know the experiment slash I don't know it's not a study <laughs> the experiment I'm talking about. Um, so they got a set of monkeys. I think chimpanzees, but you know primates whatever something with a social structure and put them in a room and in the room was a ladder and uh, A banana was on top of it and they were provided with you know food and water and everything uh, But they weren't given uh, any bananas. Is my understanding whatever the point was Whenever any one of them tried to get the banana and they touched the ladder that had the banana on top of it um, They would get a blast of cold water all of them would get a blast of cold water and they, uh, they disliked this. So, eventually, if any of the monkeys went over to the ladder and touched the ladder, the other monkeys would beat up that monkey. They would prevent any of the monkeys from trying to climb the ladder because they all didn't want to suffer for that one monkey's actions. So, that was the social norm that was established. After that, they would introduce a new monkey. And the new monkey would walk in and say, hey guys, how's it going? I know you have to do some kind of integration to get them to, you know, not just eat the other one, the new one. <laughs> but, you know, comes in and goes, hey guys, how you doing? And uh, sees the, the banana on top of the ladder and goes, oh, hey, look at that. Is anyone, I'm going to, can I just, goes over to the ladder and gets beaten up. And that monkey learns very quickly, uh, this is not the place to go. <laughs> uh, I don't touch the ladder don't go for that banana and then new monkeys were introduced more and more uh, eventually to the point that they started taking monkeys away and they took away the monkeys that knew about the cold water so the black those that knew that uh, when you climbed the ladder you got a blast of cold water everyone got a blast of cold water so in doing this and continuing this cycle they eventually removed all the monkeys that knew about the blast of cold water and the result was, uh, you know, a bunch of monkeys that had these uh, these social norms that were observed without knowing the consequence. And uh, I think the point, or at least the the point as it was represented in the uh, the secondary article that was republishing some of these findings, um, was like, oh wow, you know, isn't it amazing? They didn't even know why they weren't doing it, but they didn't do it. They refused to do it just because uh, that was the norm. And they didn't even understand why they were not doing it. Like, oh, so crazy. Um, and I thought about that, and I was like, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy, you know. We just accept these things. Um, you know, we should, we should be able to question these things. And never, for years at least, until today, did I think, well, hang on a minute. Um, it, th those, that social norm was established for a reason. And the idea is that these societies, and we're, we're kind of crossing over into human civilizations and societies, if they did stuff that worked and didn't result in them all uh, degenerating into mass rioting and looting and then barbarians taking over and then division of the, the state or division of the, the nation uh, or just mass murder of the entire nation <laughs> by some other nation due to weakness, the idea is that this civilization, this society, uh, had some some social or societal mores that that were functional, that maintained itself, and these mores, whatever they were, were you know functional. It, it's it's, a, it's a kind of a capitalist argument of a free market argument. Uh, it's like the, the strong survive, and you know if you if you have a bad product and you don't improve, improvise, adapt, and overcome, you just you're in the dustbin of history. So the idea is that if if a society is functional and doing pretty well, then the things that are generally accepted should not be changed uh, very or, or should be changed very infrequently or very very carefully uh, because you just don't know. You know, no one knows about the blast of cold water, and what you have. You know, the, the logical conclusion to this is not, oh wow, you know, isn't it crazy that we just accept these things without even understanding? Uh, just because everyone's, you know, everyone beats up the monkey and they don't even know the new monkey and they don't, know, they don't even understand why they're beating up the new monkey, they just know that they should. Like, oh, that's crazy. They're, they, they don't even have uh, autonomy. They're not even thinking about their actions. 
and this is like this is almost like a, a default appropriate setting <laughs> because the alternative setting is to provide uh, a uh, a midwit monkey to walk in and go hey guys why do we even do this and the other guys go, oh I, I don't know maybe maybe I don't know I, they, let me ask all the other monkeys oh they don't know either why do we beat up anyone who tries to uh, to climb the ladder to get that banana like uh, you know the, the scientists come in when the banana gets brown they put in a new banana but we're still not allowed to touch it why why is it there hey, guys we should try to get the banana and don't beat each other up okay and it's like, okay, you know, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. I mean, I don't even understand why we beat people up for trying to get the banana. I want the banana. He wants the banana. We all want the banana. Let's get the banana. And that is the logical conclusion is you, uh, even if you've never touched the flame and you're told not to touch the flame and you stick your finger into the flame, you're going to get burned. You know, you're, you're going to get, they're going to find out what the blast of cold water is and then the cycle will begin anew. They will all understand this is why this existed. Hopefully, for uh, hopefully with a, a better, a more rapid transition uh, to understanding why that that social norm was in place. Why that uh, I I don't like the word tradition, but you can you can call it a form of a tradition. Why that tradition takes place <clears throat> without again without understanding it, the default setting is better set at you know the the way we've always done things. And if things are bad, you know, if things get, uh, if things continue to get worse, then yeah, let's let's look at changing things. But if things are going pretty all right, uh, and from a Western pers Western civilizational perspective, uh, the amount of wars we have, uh, the amount of murder and violence, even just worldwide, the amount of poverty that's being reduced worldwide, is is extremely. I mean, this is an extremely successful civilization. We've, all the mechanization allows us to create all this food, and I have I, I have a practical, I guess, a sociological problems with the mechanization uh, of farms. Uh, I don't think we're we should be creating these gigantic population centers, but the fact remains, it is extremely productive, and by being extremely productive, you get to achieve uh, these massive populations of people who can live in, you know, in plenty. And uh, yes, I know there is poverty, but uh, I'm, I'm coming from perspective of American poverty, which is like, my big screen TV is only 32 inches poverty. Um, <clears throat> and it's, uh, you know, I have, I can get medical attention, but I only have $32,000 in, uh, in debt after that. It's crazy. I'll just, you know, you can bankrupt out of that. You can ignore it. You can do lots of stuff with that. But the point is, you're not, you're not, starving in a gutter and uh, from a historical pers uh, historical perspective that's pretty good <laughs> you know um, I see people on Twitter talking about African tribes you know, cutting up elephants and oh my goodness these people they're they're not like us they're animals they're it's disgusting it's like bro you've never been hungry in your entire life and hungry like hunger like deep hunger deep hunger um, and certainly never been motivated by starving children literally starving children not I haven't eaten today or I haven't I skipped a meal like rib cage distended stomach organs uh, swelling and failing starving children and we're just sitting up on our high horse going oh, look at all those other people oh, how terrible how terrible what's it's it, it's weird i don't know it, it, it's, it's really weird watching all this uh, like the riot stuff coming from a, a self-defense uh instructor's perspective all of this people don't understand violence or force at all it's it, it boggles my mind it, it's it, it, it's crazy um the idea that uh, you know first of all people are like oh no this is you know this is uh America is on fire, and uh, someone posted a, a thing about uh, 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 assembly of videos of Sarajevo, where people are trying to like walk to work and literally dodging bullets between fighting factions within the state, and artillery coming in and mortars bombing uh, random buildings and fires everywhere, and 
for for what it's worth, uh, the death count for this riot, there are lots of lots of injuries, but the death count is very low, very low. And uh, last I checked, it was like 14 across the nation, 14, and people getting beat up real bad. Uh, but 14, you know, property damage, yes, you know, burning buildings, yes, and you know, burning large corporate structures is is bad, uh, technically bad, um, but burning mom and pop shops is, is 10 times worse. Um, no, none of it makes any sense why you would destroy the property, but, but the people who are like, well, you know, uh, it's like they've never met an unreasonable man before. These areas, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say what I think. Um, these areas are just, just ripe for, for destruction. It's, you know, the, the idea that violence uh, never solves anything is, is hilariously wrong and ridiculous. And it's just like, the cognitive dissonance required uh, to believe something like that is just unreal. And the idea of uh, police, you know, uh, police uh, doing a violence to a people, a person, it. That's literally what they do. They, they train to do that. They train to do it in a, a safe and effective manner with minimal force required uh, in order to take people into custody so that they can go to court and uh, defend themselves for, uh, for, from the accusations and you know hear evidence and all that stuff. There's, there's due process. That's the point. That is part of this civilization is the understanding that no one man is judge, jury, and executioner. But like using violence to restrain someone. Knee on neck? You can probably look this up pretty easily. I know quite a bit about police stuff. Knee on neck is a standard practice across a lot of departments because it does not kill anyone. It does not kill people. It allows you to control a person um, very easily with one person. Now, George Floyd, the, that whole thing, he didn't he was restrained. He had three cops on top of him. There was no reason to keep your knee on his neck at that point. Uh, I don't know why he wasn't in a car. And if your suspect in custody who is restrained goes limp, it is your responsibility as the, the arresting officer. You have the responsibility for the safety of that person once they're in custody. If you have a guy in your back seat and your car catches on fire, you can't just leave and watch him burn to death. That's that's murder, almost. You are responsible for his safety. That's why they duck your head. You know, once you're in custody, you're not supposed to, you know, they don't put you in handcuffs and then just beat you up. That's not the point. They don't put you in handcuffs and then bang your head against the side of the door. They, they, they duck your head down. Don't hit your head, sir. You know, I know I just punched you in the face three times to get you to to, to get the handcuffs on you, but, but don't monk your head. That's the point. You're trying to get someone in custody so that they can stand in court. Uh, this is a, this is an aside. It, it, it was nonsense. The whole thing was nonsense and completely unjustified. Um, shoot, where was I with this? <laughs> like violence and force are are used on a daily basis to maintain this this lovely running civilization where you can just get in your car and drive to Kroger and get some food and then go to the gas station afterwards and get some gas. And you know what, maybe you stop uh, for an ice cream on the way. You know what, you brought your kids too. Your kids are in the back seat because they wanted to come along and have fun on the ride. This is, these are all, um, these are all Western luxuries. Like the, the idea that you can just, okay, I'm, I'm gonna go on a car ride, I might not come back. You know, uh, the warlord might have set up a, a roadblock and, uh, I might twitch the wrong way and or not have enough money and I might just get shot and not come back. Like that that happens in countries. And we're here like guys, what if we just didn't police anything? And there's funny stuff, ridiculous stuff coming out of Seattle, but I don't want to talk about that right now. 
the idea that uh, all men are reasonable and can be reasoned with and should be reasoned with and must be reasoned with is absolutely false, uh, historically false. And, and any nation, or a re not nation, any country or civilization or society that forgets that uh, doesn't get to be one for very much longer.